My name is Michael DeCourt. I was the lead system engineer to um, the Deepwater program. The federal government is spending billions of dollars to improve the fleet of the U.S. Coast Guard. The massive modernization program called Deepwater. This is the largest acquisition program in the Coast Guard's history. 91 new ships and 124 smaller boats. A $24 billion project. The Deepwater System program will provide our nation with a 21st century Coast Guard. But the program has serious problems. And it ended up way over its head. One day, somebody came to me and they said, I'm going to tell you something just so my conscience is clear. The radios that they were putting on the smaller boats that were exposed uh, were not waterproof. Some of the systems mounted on the outside of the boat wouldn't survive uh, harsh elements or harsh weather. The radios would have failed if they even got a little bit wet. And, and you need a radio to communicate, right? The backup for that radio not being on that small boat is a flare. If you could screw something up in that area, you're pretty much open game for anything else. Some of the things I found on my own, some of it was brought to me though, right? Some things that people told me about. There's a point at which the boats were not designed properly with their hull extensions and they buckled. They were all bending. And if you can imagine them going out in very high seas, the, the boats would have just fell apart. It just um, snowballed. So if you make a design error, but you do not correct it, you do not tell somebody about it, you do not, and you misrepresent that design problem, and you say everything's fine, now you've just crossed into the, the point from making a mistake to willful intent and to, to fraud. I didn't want a loss of life, right? So that, that was my thing. I, I didn't want a loss of life. Lives of the people doing the rescuing, but also average citizens, right? I mean, the Coast Guard rescues people who are in trouble from fishing outings or storms or whatever. I wanted to make sure that if something bad happened to one of these boats or somebody in the general public or whatever, that uh, I didn't want that on my conscience. Like most people, maybe they tell their boss and then they drop it. That, that wasn't good enough. I was in my car in the parking lot. And I remember thinking, OK, I got to do something else. I, I tried to think of something that I thought would be catching. So I thought I would do a YouTube video. All they were using it for at the time was, you know, goofy pet tricks. Nobody ever used YouTube for as a whistleblower, right? And that was the angle I was trying to go for. So I wrote a script, and I had one of those cheap com computer cameras, and I read it one time, and it seemed OK. And then I, I, I just, the second one was, was the take. <laughs> Before I begin, I want to tell you that making videos like this is not something I do as a profession. So I broke all the rules of a professional, but my thought was that that's not the point, because it, it, to, to some degree, I was, you know, I was running out of ideas at the time. The purpose of this video is to ask for your assistance in helping me resolve several serious safety and security issues. But then after that, I had a, a listing of dozens and dozens of reporters in both print and media, and I told them that I posted the video. I was a reporter covering Homeland Security, and while doing research on the Deepwater Project, Michael DeCourt told me really explosive information. I took his tips, and then I used that to report. I talked to the companies involved, and I was able to basically confirm individual allegations he was making. That's incredible to see that the federal government made such a terrible mistake. Then I thought, well, here we go, because it's all momentum. You can find the most unusual videos on YouTube.com, but one of them has raised questions about a potential homeland security problem. Now his story has gotten more public attention in just a few weeks than in all the months he spent rattling the cage through traditional means. The Coast Guard's own expert warned radios placed in open boats shorted out because they weren't waterproof and of serious design flaws that could lead to catastrophic hull collapse. It takes a lot of guts to do what Michael DeCourt did, to blow the whistle on the largest defense contractor in the world. When I brought this information to Lockheed Management, they directed me and my team to stop looking into whether or not the rest of the equipment met requirements. You have provided enormous service to the public, to the committee, and I think in the long run, to the Coast Guard. I remember sitting at lunch with people and saying, you know, this could get on 60 Minutes. The $24 billion project has turned into a fiasco that has set new standards for incompetence and triggered a Justice Department investigation. Michael DeCourt was Lockheed Martin's lead engineer for electronics on the patrol boats. We actually ordered 
radios for very, the very small boats that go on the 123s that were not waterproof. That is hard to believe. Yes, sir. Now knock on the door. They've come for me. Agents raiding his home. I knew that I was being watched and I knew that I was being investigated. They actually brought down the presidential home because they thought I might be on the board. And there's no precedent for that. It, it never happened before. I remember telling my immediate supervisor, what are we doing? As here he is telling me, don't worry about it. And don't ask any more questions. 